Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Ishin Cinecan, a micro brushless 4K Cinewhoop. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features, show you how to set it up, and then head outdoors and test it out. In terms of packaging, the Ishin Cinecan comes inside this useful Ishin branded carrying case. Inside you can find the quadcopter, a 300mAh 3S LHB battery, a spare camera cable for the Cadex Tauzir camera, the Cadex Tauzir instructions, and a battery velcro strap, another bag with one set of Emax Avant 2 inch propellers, a screwdriver, extra screws, and a hex key, a noise the control board for the Cadex Tauzir camera, and finally the user manual. In terms of components, the Cinecan is very similar to the Happy Model Lava X. It's using the same 1103 7000 kV motors and the Crazy Bee F4 V3 all-in-one flight controller. In addition, it's using the same VTX of the Ishin trash can, which is a 40 channels VTX that supports smart audio and has a selectable output range of 25, 100 and 200 mV. The highlight of the Cinecan is of course the Cadex Tauzir 4K split camera, which is bundled with their MD8 filter, which is going to help to reduce the jello in the flight footage and also protect the camera lenses. The Cadex Tauzir 2 20x20 boards are located on top of the flight controller and mounted using an adapter. Over here you can find the micro SD card slot. And on the other side, these two buttons, which are not very easy to access, and will enable you to start and stop the recording procedure and also turn on and off the Wi-Fi in order to configure the camera using a dedicated app. The Cinecan is available both in plug and play and ban and fly versions. The plug and play version does not come with a receiver, so you will need to add your own one, but you should know that in order to add your own receiver, you will need to practically take the Cinecan apart, which might not be an easy task. The Bind and Fly version is available with either FRSky or FlySky compatible receivers which are built into the flight controller. In order to bind them, you will need to use the SPI RX bind command since the bind button is pretty much blocked with the Cadex Tauzir board. You should note that the range of these receivers is very limited and you can expect between 100 to 150 meters. In addition, you can also get another Bind and Fly version, which is bundled with a TBS Crossfire receiver, and then you are going to be pretty much limited by the range of the VTX. The weight of the Cinecan is 63.9 grams, not including a battery, and 89.2 grams, including the included 300mAh 3S LHV battery. In addition, its wheelbase is 85mm, its frame looks pretty durable, and the battery is mounted on the bottom using these two plastic parts. In case you would like to use bigger batteries, which I don't think is recommended, you will need to trim these plastic parts and use the included battery velcro strap. The easiest way to bind the onboard receiver of the Ishin Cinecan with your remote controller is to first of all connect the flight controller to your computer using a micro USB to USB cable, then head over to Betaflight, hit connect, head over to the configuration section and in case you have the FRSky version you can choose between FRSky D and FRSky X options. If you are going to choose FRSky X you are going to use the D16 protocol and if you are going to use FRSky D which is the one I've tested you are going to use FRSky D8 protocol. The new versions of the FRSky remote controller do not support FRSky D8 protocol so in case you have a new remote controller you will probably have to use the FSKI X option. After you choose which protocol you would like to use, head over to the CLI section and type bind underscore RX underscore SPI and then the receiver is going to enter binding mode. Then navigate to the bind option on your remote controller and over here you can see that I chose the FSKI D8 protocol, hit bind, And you can see that now the LED on the bottom is flashing, which means that the binding procedure was successful. With both D8 and D16 protocol, you are going to get the RSSI, so if you'd like, you can display it on the on-screen display. The next thing that you need to do is to head over to the receiver tab on Betaflight and make sure that all the sticks are configured properly. Then I recommend to define an arm switch and also all your desired modes, and then you're pretty much ready to go. 
The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Cinecan using the included 300mAh 3S LHB battery and also using a 520mAh 2S LHB battery by GNB. With both batteries, I got close to 2.5 minutes of flight time, but I recommend to stick to the 3S LHP battery since the performance with the 2S just wasn't great. In case you are debating whether to get the Mobile 7 HD or the Ishin Cinecan, I can tell you that in my opinion, the Mobile 7 HD flies better, performs better, and will also give you a better flight time. However, the big problem is that its all-in-one flight controller is not very reliable, and many users reported that it just burnt. The issue is related to the 4-in-1 ESC, which is only limited to 5 amperes, whereas on the Cinecan it has been upgraded to 10 amperes. So what Happy Model recommend to do is to add a capacitor and also limit the throttle to 80%. I hope that soon they are going to release an upgraded version with the Crazy B F4 Pro V3, and then these issues are going to be eliminated. And in that case, I would go with the upgraded version of the Mobile 7 HD over the Cinecan. But at this point, I can tell you that the Cinecan is probably going to be a better option. So overall, if you're looking for a small quadcopter that can shoot at 4K, the Cinecan might be a good option for you. Just keep in mind that its flight time is relatively short, its range is very limited if you're going to get the version with the onboard receiver. And by the way, don't bother trying to flip it using turtle mode because it's just not going to work. Having all that said, currently the Cinecan is being sold under promotion for $165, which is a pretty good price considering all the parts that it includes, and worst case, you can get it, have some fun with it, and then use the Cadix Tazier, which is one of the best split cameras that are currently available on another build. Now I'm going to show you the flight footage, I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye. Thank you.